Well, Mother's Day has come and gone, and I wrote two poems for that occasion. But don't you think every day is, should be Mother's Day? Yeah. Yes, we should be celebrated all the time. Um, the first one is called Remembering Mother. My memories of mom began here, held in her arms, moving back and forth in the creaking, rocking chair as a music box played a lullaby. Carried into the woods to pick wild blackberries, dappled sunlight on her purple-stained hands. Sunrise on Treasure Island, pancakes and fresh-squeezed juice at Mrs. O'Leary's shanty on the beach. Then Mom and I, with our buckets, searching for shells and seahorses caught in the morning eddies. A slate board on a brick wall above Mom's daylily bed, where she'd leave one of her poems written in colored chalk. After school, I would look for her in the garden. There she'd be, bent over among the wildflowers and ferns, encouraging them all to thrive. On a snowy winter morning, I found her there again, this time with her outstretched hand, filled with seeds, chickadees perched on her fingers. Her lovely fingers also shaped clay, painted pictures, played Chopin, and was a fanciful storyteller. Creative gifts given by her mother and gratefully passed on to me. As her life ended, I hope she flew away on the back of a Canada goose into the setting sun like her imagined story character. She was quiet in a dignified way, gentle and strong. As I sit among my flowers, she is there too. I always knew that I was loved. So that was dedicated to my mother, Claire. And this next one is um, for my grandmother. It's called A Sweet Memory of Grandma. Moths flutter against the light above the back steps of Grandma's house. Cousins brought baskets of peaches picked that day. Their fragrance filled the air. Uncle Andy started the churn as we, we cousins tussled for a turn. Kittens tumbled over each other too, desperate for the sweet drips. Murmured conversation among the adults, then outbursts of laughter at the goings on. Finally, Grandma brought the bowls out. Hot summer night, sitting on the steps, peach ice cream on our lips. And that is dedicated to Clara Bell Webb, who had a master's degree in fine art and she was born in 1865. Wow. Yeah, women didn't get even to go to college in those days, much less a master's degree. I'm proud of that. Okay, this last poem is called Swimming in the Sargassum. Do you guys all know what sargassum is? It's on the news recently, it's that crap that floats up on the on the beaches in Florida that's seaweedy and stinky and people can't swim in the water and um, it was a big problem during spring break down in down south and this is called swimming in the sargassum when will the relentless wind rest and the warm and the sun warms me again. I must rise once more if I can, embrace the hours of this day. Swim toward the light, fight the pull of undertow, dragging me back into the bottomless dark. 
My tears lost in this vast sea. I cannot breathe. My limbs heavy, tethered with the weight. Float first, face the blue sky, see the soaring gulls, feel the sun and swim, breaking free of the sargassum. Thank you.